What is up guys, I'm Flanco Leche, and today I want to talk about playing incompatible games on your Steam Deck. So I'll be the first to admit that I am a big, big fan of the Valve Steam Deck. Its power and versatility makes it one of my favorite devices to pick up and either play games or just tinker with. Even though I have multiple powerful gaming PCs and even a Razer gaming laptop, I generally go for my Steam Deck every time. But there's one thing about the Steam Deck that always seems to grind my gears, and that's going to be its game compatibility. Now don't get me wrong, there are tons of games that are compatible with the Steam Deck, but quite often the titles that I personally want to play or I really enjoy are either incompatible or sometimes just too much for the mighty Steam Deck to play natively. Now there have been a number of hacks and different articles published across the internet to remedy some of these issues, but these will generally only remedy some of the anti-cheat issues and actually using some of these circumventing measures can actually get you banned from some of your favorite titles. And all of these problems are what's really made me embrace the subject of today's video, and that's going to be cloud gaming. So let me take a couple of minutes to talk to you about cloud gaming on the Steam Deck and tell you why if you own one, you should definitely be checking out cloud gaming. Now for the folks out there who are not super familiar with cloud gaming, or possibly maybe you've heard about it but you're not 100% sure how it works, here's just a really quick one-line explainer. Cloud gaming is the act of using a local device to connect to a remote device and play games on it. Now it is much more nuanced than that. I actually work in the software engineering and cloud space myself, so I could talk all about different deployment methodologies and different services you could use to actually uh, you know, generate and build out a cloud gaming platform. And different companies do use different methodologies to accomplish the same goal, but overall the underlying concept is generally the same. So what problems does cloud gaming solve specifically in relation to the Steam Deck? Well, there's actually a few. So number one, it solves the compatibility issue. Now, some titles are just simply not compatible with the Steam Deck operating system or the version of Proton that's currently running within the operating system itself. So you try to launch a game and it simply won't open or uh, it might crash upon opening or throw a couple of errors. And then it also solves the problem when it comes to compatibility with anti-cheat software. So some titles are actually able to run on the Steam Deck, but because the anti-cheat software cannot properly inspect the elements such as your kernel and your memory, uh, at that point, the game will not actually launch or run. And then to take it a step further, as I was mentioning earlier, some developers have actually put mechanisms in place that if your anti-cheat software is not running natively or it's not compatible, they will actually ban your entire game account from actually playing the game online. Another issue that Cloud Gaming solves for the Steam Deck is very similar to number one, but this time I'm talking about compatibility due to system specifications. Now there are plenty of titles that kind of fall under this category. Two that come to mind are Control and Cyberpunk. These titles are listed under Works Great on the Steam Deck, but when you actually try to run them natively, number one, you do have to turn the system specifications pretty low down to almost where the experience isn't as enjoyable. But then on top of that, even at these lower settings, you'll often run into into either low frame rates or frame skipping or overall freezing in the actual title, and it often cannot be that great of an experience. And some of these cloud gaming platforms, such as NVIDIA GeForce Now, connect you to a really powerful PC that has up to an RTX 3080. So these systems are much more powerful, and they're able to run these games at much higher frame rates. And for the third thing that I think it solves is actually something that I and a lot of other folks don't often mention when it comes to cloud gaming, but that actually has to do with the battery life. Now, if you're a Steam Deck owner, you know this thing is great, but it does have a pretty short battery life. Generally, I can get around an hour and a half to around two hours when running a title such as like Hitman on my local system. However, when playing the exact same game in the cloud, I'm often able to get four and possibly even five hour gaming sessions, depending on my screen brightness and my frame rate limitations. But overall, I'm just going to get a much longer gaming session when handheld using cloud gaming. All right, so now that I'm done shilling and sounding like an industry plant for cloud gaming, let's talk about some of the negatives of cloud gaming because there are a lot. Number one, the added cost of a cloud gaming membership. So the two top cloud gaming services, NVIDIA GeForce Now, as well as Xbox Cloud Gaming or Xbox Game Pass, both come with the monthly yearly or even half annual subscription costs. That's to be expected. It costs money to host these data centers. You have to staff them with engineers and you have to buy all the equipment and maintain it. It's just an overall expensive service to run. And of course, you as the user are gonna end up paying for it. 
We also had the late and not so great Stadia tried the quote unquote free subscription model after you bought a game and we also were that landed them. Another problem is the lack of content ownership. Now this is actually a much bigger problem and not just in cloud gaming. It's a conversation for PC gaming and console gaming alike, but this is a problem when it comes to cloud gaming. Again, if we take an example like the late and not so great Google Stadia, rest in peace, we did see all these users who had bought into the ecosystem lose access to their games and not be able to continue with the service after it shuts down in the near future. Now, of course, not all companies are going to have the money to go ahead and reimburse all the users if something like this was to happen in the future. So the lack of owning your own content is a major problem and definitely something that's prevalent inside of the cloud gaming space with all platforms except for NVIDIA GeForce Now, as that does love leverage Steam, Epic Games, and other titles to actually access your games. And for the last couple of negative items when it comes to cloud gaming in relation to the Steam Deck, I'm going to try to power through a couple of them and do a bit of a lightning round. So probably one of the biggest issues of them all is actually going to be the input latency. Now, don't get me wrong, it is damn impressive what these companies have done when it comes to accessing remote resources and still having somewhat of a local immersive experience. However, gamers spend a ton of money when it comes to peripherals and their monitors and other controllers and you know software to reduce as much latency as possible between the mouse click or the controller button press and what they actually see on the screen and the reaction time on the resulting server. So adding an extra mile of latency when it comes to your local machine accessing remote resources is definitely not going to improve that actual experience. Now, not to say that we won't get there in the future, but as of right now, latency is a major problem when it comes to our infrastructure, but possibly in the future, that might be something a little bit different. And also very much related to that input latency is stream image quality. Now, generally when you're sending data to and from remote assets and resources, you are going to be using some sort of compression to get that data back and forth as soon as possible. You're gonna to have to have a system that can encode and decode that data and then send it back and forth. And quite often when you're dealing with a situation like that, you introduce a lot of screen artifacts or blockiness, or when there's variations in your actual bandwidth, you then start to see just really weird screen artifacts and that can often really take away from the experience when playing titles on the cloud. So once again, this is something to keep in mind about when it comes to using any type of cloud gaming platform, but also specifically when using this service on a Steam Deck, which only has access to a lower end Wi-Fi card. So in summary, should you be using cloud gaming with your Steam Deck? Well, answer that question with a question. Do you like longer battery life? Do you like playing incompatible games on your Steam Deck? If both of the answers to these questions are yes, then absolutely you should be trying cloud gaming. You don't have much to lose out on, except for spending about 15 minutes getting everything set up. That's actually one of the negatives or cons that I didn't get a chance to mention, but there aren't a lot of native applications for the Steam Deck. They're a little bit hacky. You gotta run a couple of you know terminal commands to get it up and running and no native controller support. But aside from just spending about 15 minutes of your life getting it all set up, I definitely think it's worth it to check out a bit of cloud gaming. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you also dig the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Once again, guys, I'm Flanco Leche. Thanks for hanging out with me and checking out this video. I'll see you guys in my next one.